Bear Element, Episode 5, recorded 13 June 2012. Go hello! Well, hello! <laughs> Episode hello. 005, right? Wow. Cinco. We're on fire. Yes. About every two and a half weeks. <laughs> No, I'm sorry, you didn't introduce yourself, so we don't oh, know who you Vito. are. this is Vito, sorry. Oh, and this is Clay. This is Tony. And Tony's visiting us uh, once again, mm-hmm. former guest, now guest host. Yes, now guest host. We don't on, want to confuse On people. Air Bear, Tim is gallivanting off after the um, AIDS ride. They're actually on their way home. I saw a posting from James that uh, they're on their way home. Oh, that's good. Well, great. This so is congratulations to James. Hello, it's incredible. this is Wolfie. Hello, Wolfie. Oh, Wolf's you. here, too. And we have a special guest today. Ta-da. Hello. John. Introduce yourself, John. Hi, I'm John Ashfield. From the Bobbleheads. From the Bobbleheads. And your other band. Wonellies. The Wonellies, yes. All right. Well, um, let's get started. Jump right in. Vito, you invited our guest, so grill him. Ask him questions. Well, first, I want to thank him for... I'll give him a back scratch, a real back scratch right now. Do it, do it. Uh, there you go. He's doing it. Uh, for the yes. cookies. He brought us cookies. Cookies. It's kind of rude to have the, the guest bring the uh, the snacks, I think. No, it's perfectly normal. There's nothing unusual or rude about that at all. <laughs> oh, okay. It's well, quite appropriate. Thank you. I like cookies, so it's, I'm okay with it. <laughs> very, very nice of you, John. Did you make them yourself? Yes. No. Actually, I just went to hot cookie. Anybody that knows me knows that I don't really cook. So. <laughs> Yeah, and Hot Cookie is God. That place has what been here longer than any of us, right? In the Castro, right? yeah, yeah. That's pretty crazy institution with yummy cookies. So yeah. that's good. They're they're not big, but they are definitely yummy. They're, they're bite size. We got lots of them, oh, so we're oh, good. Hosh, 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 hosh. Mm, chocolate chip. They're delicious, and if you're actually in the Twin Peaks bar in the bathroom, you can smell them right through. Really? Yeah. While they're cooking them. Oh my goodness! Yeah, I had no idea. Extra special treat. <laughs> I'm so that's like the nicest smelling bathroom in the Castro? At least on that block. Oh, okay. <laughs> it's kind of like Disneyland where they pump the pump the smells, <laughs> but they put it into the uh, glass coffin. <laughs> <laughs> well, usually the bars in the Castro smell like 409 and puke, right? So, so that's kind of an improvement. Interesting combination, but yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that's funny. So you said Disneyland, and then you said Glass Coffin, and I'm like, so that's for Walt? What? Oh, oh no, a different no. story. But I'm bummed. Back to John. Back to John. Yes. So, so you've been in these bands for quite a few years. Uh, yeah, the Bobbleheads got started in 2002, 2003, after I put out a solo album here, after I had moved to San Francisco. Mm-hmm. And uh, it, I needed a band to play gigs and it kind of turned into what the bobbleheads are now so kind of like me in the podcast i couldn't do by myself exactly it's it's a lot more fun to rock out with a group of people than get up on stage alone you know (laughs) it's it's, because certainly with computers and stuff you could record all you want at home and make it sound kind of like a band's playing and like previously you had chris ifos on and Mm -hmm. he's produced a bunch of my albums and recorded things with me and Mm -hmm. uh, i've played with him a lot um so it's always, it's just better to have somebody else to hear it, too. Oh, my God. I just slapped me in the face. John is the gentleman that was gracious enough to create our uh, intro and outro to the podcast. Oh, uh, yes. Yes, thank wow. you so much. No I, problem. That, that was actually really funny because, uh, you know, that was Easter Sunday when uh, you ran into my husband, Greg. Yeah, and I... And, can, <laughs> and I we were still, we were lucky. We had a few people um, offer some suggestions, and we liked yours the best. Ah. So, John, what, oh, was cool. your, what was your inspiration for the little theme song, Diddy? You know, I, I, when I, I, Greg told me that, you know, he basically uh, on Easter I was wearing a giant pink bunny outfit for the Wonellies because <laughs> we played at the uh, Sisters in the Park thing. So I'm walking around the park in a giant pink bunny outfit. And uh, Greg comes up to me and says, hey, I told Vito you were going to write him a podcast. He needs it this week. A podcast theme? A podcast theme. Yeah. So <laughs> I was like, oh, okay. Okay. So um, Vito sent me some words he was thinking of and some different stuff. And then I wanted it to be rocking. And I wanted it to have like a quiet part to talk over. I figured that would help. And that's kind of where you guys cut it off, which makes sense. So It was tough for me to figure out where to do that. Um, 
But I elected to go with a shorter intro and a longer outro. Yeah. It's it's totally cool. It just seemed to work. Well, at the risk of possibly either offending you or delighting you or boring the <laughs> shit out of you, yeah. I will let you know that when I first heard it, I thought of the um, Kids in the Hall theme. Oh, cool. Yeah. yeah. No, I dig, I dig that Kind of catchy, song. a little sh- kitschy. You know, it was fun. Well, I always want, you know, I always think of, you know, the first records I had were all Partridge Family and Monkeys. And, Woohoo! You know, a lot of bubblegum kind of stuff. So I always want to hear something snappy with a chorus. And I'm not the most angsty person, so I'm not really upset at the world. So <laughs> it, that, that doesn't really come through. Music, no, so. it, was, it was very happy and upbeat, just like your songs I've listened to. Just like the music, it really is... Uh, yeah. The, the pop, it's very, it's a lot of fun. Well, when I was young, I used to listen to the radio, waiting for my favorite song. Mm-hmm. But when it played, I'd sing along. It made me smile. Uh... <laughs> <laughs> okay, Karen. Some of us are old enough to... Wait, w- was that a quote from a song? Yes. Uh, yes. Was that a Carpenter song? Of course. Yes, it was my very, my very first LP, thank you very much. Oh, my God. Was it the Brown Greatest Hits so album, or was it... D- dating yourself. I don't remember which record it was. Uh... Sorry. No, it's okay. Long time ago. <laughs> I used to get records as a kid very often, and, and Carpenter's records were in them. Was, you know, safe for children to listen to. Right? My uh, first eight track was a song for you. Oh, way cool. Eight track tapes. Wow. Did, did it have an edit in the middle of the song? Because that was always my thing that I hated, even as a kid, where it would be like Superstar Part One, and then on track three would be superstar part two so in the middle of the song you would start hearing it and it would get softer and softer and then, <laughs> then then it would pick up the rest of the song do, do you remember that i do yeah. unfortunately yes i do remember. yeah they would that. chop songs in half oh when they had to turn it around you mean yeah like yeah. when the head had to move that click it, you, you would hear that big click and it would change yeah because oh. the head was physically moving yeah. right you know on the eight track tape yes oh yes the huge click my, my first stereo was uh, eight track tape combination cassette so I was right on that transition, you know, from the two technologies. This is Vito. So, John, what are your musical inspirations? What you know, what what drives you in the bobbleheads and the Wonellies? Uh well, you know, the big ones clearly are you know like the Beatles and Paul McCartney, and then um, Beach Boys. You know, those are the big things, and then from there. Uh, probably Squeeze and XTC and a lot of the uh, late 70s power pop bands. You know, when I have to describe the bobbleheads, usually I'll say it's like the Scooby-Doo theme with more rock. But there are lots of hand claps and <laughs> harmonies and, you know, that's kind of what comes out when we play. You know, but but it is a little heavier than that at the same time. But it's still, you know, it's not Metallica or something. <laughs> so, you know. You've got a new album, this Tony, uh, coming out uh, this summer. And I was curious about it. Uh, can you tell us something about that? Um, we're recording with Doug Hilsinger, who managed the Eagle, and he also throws together all those drag cover bands, uh, like Shielo and the oh, Shee-Gees wow. and uh, Girls with Kaleidoscope Eyes. Those are three that I was in, but they also do uh, Best Friends, Girlfriends, which is Cars, and Cinnamon Girls, which was Neil Young. And but so you dress in one of the bands you've done? You've dressed in drag? Yes, it's it's terrible drag though. It used to be on YouTube, but uh, I think camp, it was taken drag. down. Yeah, because like for Shielo, it was a bunch of us, and it was all like guys with beards and bad tube tops and you know skirts <laughs> and things. It, you know, it was the, I, I think we all tried to look as trashy and awful as possible. Did you do any makeup? Um, I didn't. No, usually it was just like it just looked like we wandered through the the ladies section at a thrift store or something, and we got picked the most ill fitting, horrible clothes ever, and. Uh, but the music, we, you know, we really spent a lot of time getting the music right. So it was still fun to play. And, you know, it, basically those bands were a lot of fun because it was all the, uh, I guess, the gay rock scene at the Eagle when it was still open. Because there, were, there were, happened to be a bunch of us there that kind of all hung out, you know. You just reminded me of a band, well, we're talking about you, but there was Slow Jack. Do you remember Slow Jack? I, I do. Yeah, I thought their songs were quite uh, gay-oriented, I guess would be the, the thing to say. <laughs> to talk about blowjobs and... All sorts of things. Blowjobs are can be gay. Can be, can be, <laughs> can be yeah. It's, they not can ne- be a little straight too, but not, but, not necessarily. And uh, <laughs> all sorts of stuff. But. Yeah. but you guys have gone real mainstream. I mean, you recorded um, "History Repeating" with Shirley Bassey, right? Um, no. What? <laughs> no, we, we didn't do that. Song. Are you telling me I did my homework wrong? Apparently. Uh, that was a joke. They're the powerheads. They're the bobbleheads. Bobble oh, yeah. okay. Yeah. That's a joke. Ah. That was a funny... Ha, ha. You can edit that. I, I'd like to think that we're very mainstream, but <laughs> I mean, we have been in The Advocate. Um, I think that's about as mainstream as we've gotten, and we did have a film, uh, a song and a film score for uh, Bear in Bear City, or 
Yeah, Bear City. It was Bear, Bear City. City. The yeah. first Bear City. first one? Yeah, yeah, the first one. Cool. And As got... they walk into a bar, right. they start playing our song. <laughs> it's, it's, you know, it's, it's kind of like, it's not there very long, but, you know, sitting in the audience hearing your record is kind That's of cool. That's way cool, yeah. So. Yeah. And you've got another one coming out. There's another movie, I guess, uh, in the frame line and for Pride that... Uh, yeah, there's this, there's a movie called Love or Whatever, yeah. which is uh, Wednesday this uh, this Wednesday the twentieth, and uh, it's playing a frame line, and we have two songs in it, uh, thirty seven bus and a song called Auft. Well, good for so, you guys, and this is all with uh, Phil and Eugene. Yes, yeah, we're, we're just a trio. Uh, Eugene plays bass, and Phil plays drums and sings. He's kind of the co lead singer, which is bad for him because usually I stand in front of him, and I'm kind of a big dude, so. <laughs> yeah, it's hard to you know. You know um, Phil's back there. Yeah, Phil is back there. I always have to tell the sound guy, "Don't turn down his mic. He's got to sing." Does he um, st- does he kind of lean to one side? <laughs> he tries to, but you know he's got to play those drums, right? They're all over. The- <laughs> so it's a whole big thing. Yo, Phil. Well, now I know their names. Yeah, that's cool. No, we've been playing for a while. Phil uh, put out an ad in Craigslist. I answered it, and then kind of there were a bunch of other people in the band who kind of came and went, and then Eugene came. And then he went away for a few years, and then uh, the bass player we had quit, and the day our bass player quit, Eugene moved back. Wow. So it was kind of this nice little happy story. That's cool. So, so yeah. is this like the 37 Corbett that the song's about? It is. I used to live where the 37 bus stopped right outside our door. Oh, and cool. And you could take it to the Castro, so I uh, wrote a happy little song about it. I used to... <laughs> I loved the 37 when I lived up on Twin Peaks. Mm-hmm. It was just... And there was this crazy driver and he would always oh. say and remember muni loves you <laughs> as you're getting <laughs> off the bus and it was a hoot as they careen through those streets yeah. Yeah. exactly <laughs> yeah. Yeah. if yeah, muni I've, loves me so much why are they trying to kill me on this bus oh they're always trying to kill you i mean the, the, you slam against the walls and go crazy wow. it's today hey, it's muni we yeah. should definitely talk about the Muni and all my adventures on the Muni. I'm sure everybody's Herb had Kane used to call it the Municipal Railway Transportation System. <laughs> wow. Really? Municipal. Municipal. Yeah. Well, it's amazing. It gets me everywhere I want to go when I want to go. And the style that I want to go. No, not really. But Really? Is, is that the style? No, that's not the style. I just thought I'd say that. But Your style The crazy on people Muni. I've seen. We could We could talk for... Forever about the Muni. Anyway. And how much is it now? Two dollars? A couple of dollars, yeah. yeah, yeah. It's two dollars, and they just raised the pass fee. Starting in Another January, dollars, July. Yeah. A yeah. dollar or two dollars, depending on So what is it like seventy-two dollars, I think, for a pass? No, it's it was seventy two like sixty-two now. It's sixty two, it's it's going up without to, Bart. Yeah. Without seventy two with Bart, and it's yeah. gonna go up two bucks. Another two bucks. So sixty four yeah, and seventy four. Let's, let's uh talk about the muni another time because so, there's all sorts of fun stuff to talk about the muni so john is there anything else you want to share with us about you your music your life well it's a loaded question are you sure you want to want me to go? <laughs> yeah, start um, a child we, all right we've got, um, we've got 45 seconds tell us about go. your hubby all maybe. right <laughs> um greg uh greg humphrey is my husband and he does the website and has taken videos and pictures he's kind of the uh Linda and Yoko of the band, I suppose. The website is cool, actually. Yeah, he does a great job. Yeah, you know, really. He, he does some really cool stuff. And it's a, it's, he also did the Wonellies.com, where you can see uh, my other band and what we're doing. The Wonellies play covers, so there's more songs you're likely able to have heard before, before you play it, where the bobbleheads play all stuff that I write. So he also designed our T-shirts, which we have. I love it, the big splat. Yes. I, uh, XXX, please. All right, I'll have to look in our T-shirt boxes and see what we have left. And I love the design. I want to do ours like that with just the website on the back shoulder. Mm-hmm. It's, uh, I love that. Yeah, the, we have, the Bobbleheads have a Facebook page, so you can look at, look at us there, and the Wonellies have a Facebook page, too. And we'll have all and those links on the, on the website. All right. Of the bare element. Very, very cool. You know, with the Wonellies, it's, it's kind of fun. I got to buy a new guitar this spring, and it... Uh, we were playing Hooked on a Feeling, the B.J. Thomas version, oh, which wow. has lots of electric sitar. <laughs> and the the problem, when you try to play it on regular guitar, it just sounds like you're playing lead guitar and won't shut up. So the lead singer of the Wonellies, uh, Lee Crow, is this amazing you know singer. She just turns to me and she goes, you know, I know a tranny in Oakland that makes electric sitars. <laughs> and, and I was like, uh, so do I. Really? Like, <laughs> Duh, doesn't uh, everybody? A tranny oh that makes electric sitars? I'm like, I want to buy an electric sitar made by a tranny. So sure <laughs> wow. enough, at, at our next uh, rehearsal, Ronnie Guitar shows up with this fabulous electric sitar. I want the link to that, too. Uh, she we'll has a Facebook, Dinette Guitars on Facebook. Su- super okay. rad stuff. But uh, I was just like, am I on a TV show? Tranny that makes 
Sitars? All I right. see trannies all the time. Where yeah, I so live. Now I've got an electric sitar, and it's only because of the Wonellies. So thank well, you, that's Wonellies. Cool. That's awesome. Woohoo. Well, that's cool. Well, this week, we since we have our, our guest here for the full hour, we like we did with um, our previous guest for the full hour, we let them pick the first topic that we're going to talk about. And so our first talk about topic will be, are you out at work? Oh, mm. uh, I guess since I'm the guest, I should go. Um, I, I'm, I teach K-5 elementary school music in a public school uh, near Palo Alto. And I, I don't think anybody there really has any shocking, you know, I don't, I don't think it was any re- revelation after 12 years that I'm a big homo. You know, I, I think they all know that. But uh, this year I had to actually tell people that I wasn't friends with, like, you know, like the PTO and the parents and stuff. They have a uh, cultural arts day, they call it, where they try to... It's a very uh, rich town with very rich uh, children that are kind of (laughs) self-empowered. So they they have this really well-meaning idea to try to bring in people from other countries to have, like, a cultural awareness day Mm -hmm. and different things. So there was a uh, Ugandan... uh, folk dance and music troupe oh, coming wow. through which were really pretty fabulous like they were really great and it's an orphanage and the people that run the orphanage are uh, pretty apolitical and uh, are trying to help kids that were forced to fight in the civil war that's going on there oh my but of course in uganda they want to kill gay people and that's a popular oh, thing yeah oh my god i've seen videos right so they get the poop and they put it in the mouth the poop. Yes, exactly. So all of a sudden we're at the staff <laughs> meeting and I'm sitting there and they're like, well, we're going to have Celebrate Uganda Day and we're going to be doing this Ugandan celebration and eat Ugandan food and do all this stuff. And John, they're going to be contacting you so you could help them set up the PA and the stage and you know tell them what to do. And I was just kind of like, oh, what do I do here? Because really? like, I didn't want to, because the parents donate a lot of money to the school, so I didn't want to cause like a big stir. So I checked into the... Uh, the charity that runs it and they were all really good people that had good intentions and they all wanted to talk to me once i told them you know i'm the teacher at the school but i happen to be gay and i'm not so comfortable celebrating uganda you know and then the nice thing that happened apparently they had a pto meeting and the uh, parents brought this up that i wouldn't be able to help because i was i was just going to call in sick that day and not be there just to you know not really be because music is tenuous in school so i didn't want to be like a thorn in anyone's side who donates money to, so I exist you know, right, and yeah. don't work at Starbucks or something. So not that there's anything wrong with working at Starbucks, but you know, I, I have had this long teaching career that I want to keep. So, um, but apparently they had a PTO meeting and the, they brought it up and the parents said, if it's not okay with Mr. Ashfield, we're not going to do it. Which I was wow. like, whoa. And then they changed it to Lake Victoria region day with Africa. <laughs> so they threw in some extra countries that are probably also heinously awful for gay people to live in. But... <laughs> But Uganda is the poster child right now. Yeah, Uganda so it was, it, and, and they were all horrified. Like they they were all like so like apologetic and super nice. Wow. But they're you know but they're straight people. So to them it was something that was on the news a year ago now. So last fall it wasn't right at the top of yeah. anyone's list, and you know it wasn't uh, anything. They like you. They really like you. I know. It, it felt really nice. That's really cool. So, so, so yes, that's, very likable. That's great. So now I'm quite out at work, you know, since I had them change their their thing. Well, different jobs, you know, different jobs. I've had different outings. I mean, like I don't talk about it with anybody in the upper echelon, but like last night for the first time, one of the guys, the new guy, totally knew I was a bear. <laughs> it's a straight guy, and he said, "I heard you say something about the Castro," and I just bam knew you were a bear. I'm like, "What do you know about bears?" <laughs> You know, we've gone mainstream, folks. You do have a look. I mean, <laughs> you know, the, the weirdest thing to me that happened like that, I was in Munich, and I went to this the Munich Bear Bar, which was, like, smaller than this room. So I walk in, and everybody just turns and looks at me, and I'm like, uh, I don't know what to say here. And then this really hot German daddy bear turns and just literally put, puts his arms out and points at me and goes, now here is a true American chub. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm just standing there in front of, like, 13 people. So finally I was American like, chub. uh... Hi, I'm John. Like I, I felt like the speckled owl or something <laughs> yeah. in the museum, but I guess I guess you know I fit some definition. The distinctions that's, between chubs and bears and cubs and that's funny. I was um, this isn't about being out at work, which I am just sort of by default because I, mean, I don't really give a shit what people yeah. think. But um, when I was in London one time, this really cute guy <laughs> was asking me, he's like, "So you know, are you going to XXL?" And I'm like, in a British accent, I'm like, "What?" Because you're going to XXL, and I'm not getting the letters through the British accent. And then finally, I'm like, XXL. And I, you know, aghast, was like, no, 
because I didn't think of myself as XXL at the time. I was clearly XXL, but you know. <laughs> <laughs> but you didn't know about the dance, is what you're saying. I knew about it, but oh. yeah, I had no intention. You didn't of think going. it was appropriate. Oh. oh, and I was, and it, I wasn't like offended. Offended. I was just like, oh, what? He's like, no, I, no offense. I'm like, none taken. You know, with attitude. Oh, none taken. It reminds Whatever. me of the time I was in like Louisiana on a business trip and I went into a Walmart. Sorry, I went into a Walmart. Uh, and there was this cute little know. cub behind the bar and he was the gayest thing behind the register and he was the gayest thing I've ever <laughs> heard in my life. And I was just like, you know, are there any bear bars or bears around here? So, uh, just something casually. And he goes, those are in the Smoky Mountains, the bears. They're in the Smoky <laughs> <laughs> he answered as honestly as he could. I mean. <laughs> he could. <laughs> okay. Oh my. All right. And, anyway. it, and if you're out there listening, uh, get in contact with Vito through our website. <laughs> <laughs> oh my God, I remember that day. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> I thought he said the bears were in the Smoky Mountain. You rocked my world, Vito. <laughs> oh, Vito gets that a lot. Are, are you out, Tony? Um, right now I am. As as we speak. <laughs> Uh, right, right. This second. How about at work? No, at, at work, I've had you know since I've been in San Francisco, I've had several different jobs, and mm. I've been out in a few of the jobs. Right, right now, I work for the government, and I'm not out, but it's one of those things where I don't care. I mean, if somebody point blank asks me, mm-hmm. I'm just gonna be honest. I'm not hiding at work, but I don't, you know, mm. I don't, yeah, I don't really, I don't show up at a job and. Uh, have my little, uh, you know, media outlet where I say, hey, guess what, everybody? I'm going to go drink the Castro. I'm, you know, I just like men. <laughs> well, the, the first picture, I'm going to go suck some guy's dick. There you go. The first picture I put up in my cube is a picture of my dog Scarlet with her kerchief that says, I have two daddies. So, and then the next picture I put up is Bill and I. So, mm-hmm. yeah. It's like, if they ask, they ask. If they don't. Gay. Yeah. Gay. Forget the. <laughs> Is a poofta. I mean, it is easier here in the San Francisco area to be. Gay, yeah, that's right? what. There's a lot of gays everywhere. So that's why I not... talk to my friend. I go, should I? Should I tell people I'm gay at work? He's all, you live in San Francisco. It's, redu- it's redundant almost. Yeah, you know. Yeah, I don't think because even the like you know people that are way straight here could care less. You know that I've. Right, it into. seems to be a non-issue. Is what? Yeah, it, it's a non-issue. It, you know, I'm sure they don't want it in their face, but it's a it's a non-issue. Mind well, you, if you're volunteering for like the Baptist Church, maybe not so much. You, yeah, you, you want? But, but who, whole, who said that? Was that you, Clay? You do? You want it in your face? Is that what you said? <laughs> you want gay in your face? <laughs> well, no, well, no. But the, the whole gay in the face thing is funny because I, I, there was a teacher at school that brought up that discussion with me. She's like, "Well, well, how how come you guys like really need to push for gay marriage and stuff? Like, you know." And it was an older teacher. So I was like, well, you know, there's a pregnant lady sitting at this table. And, and that's kind of in my face that she had sex with her husband. Wow. You know, and we teach at a school with little tiny versions of the parents that drop them off, which is pretty clear indication that they got it on naked and what's with it? penises and vagina, right? So so it's, it's kind of like I'm <laughs> awesome. not, I'm not doing anything fingers? as... Like, like I, I don't see most gay people unless you're unless like you show up to work and like do gay stuff in front of them or something. Do but gay I mean, stuff? <laughs> how do I know I haven't done gay stuff? I, I, I don't know. People. I, I want the list. Breathe, and you're the, doing gay the stuff. The official list of gay stuff. Yeah, I do. Uh, I want the. I never got the manual. Veto. Staring at crotches. Actually, I'm on the Bobblehead website, and there's the a list story. right here. Is there a list of gay stuff? <laughs> there should be. Yeah, uh, uh, should be. So that's, I, should, I should write a song called "Gay Stuff." At gay work. stuff. <laughs> gay stuff at work. <laughs> That'll be the remix. And we're back. We're back. <laughs> <All right. laughs> With our guest John Ashfield from the Bobblehead. Hi. Hey John. Hi John. Hey. Welcome back. Thank you for having me. It's always nice to have the guest come back after the break. Not run screaming. <laughs> not run screaming. <laughs> This is Just fun. Leave, your, leave your cookies, okay? Yes. <laughs> leave oh, you have to go? Cookies. Leave the cookies. Leave the cookies. The or... cookies are good. Yes, you absolutely. must be one with them. So, Vito, I heard you took a tour of the Golden Gate Bridge. I did. Thank you for that transition. That was good awesome. Good job, John wow. Ashfield. Wow. I'm impressed. Would you be interested in guest hosting occasionally? <laughs> sure. Meet somebody? <laughs> awesome, because you're great. Um, yes, it was unbelievable. The San Francisco Movie Bears, out of the blue, I got this email saying... Hey, we've got uh, 60 tickets, 31 Sunday, 30 another Sunday, and it's uh, like a guided tour of the bridge when it's when the bridge is closed. I was like, oh my God, this is awesome. 75th anniversary. I'm in. 
And then I emailed uh, Clay to see if he was interested, and he was. But he got on the wait list for Sunday a couple weeks ago. Um, but then they opened up Saturday, and they moved him to the, him and Bill onto the Saturday. So those tour. of you that live in the San Francisco Bay Area, a lot last um, it was Saturday the second is when I went with Bill, and. Vito got to go on Sunday the 3rd, and Sunday the 3rd was just like the evening of the 75th anniversary and the fireworks. It was beautiful out, crystal clear, it was gorgeous. Uh, the night we were there, the night before, you couldn't see the bridge. That's how much fog was on it. <laughs> it was hysterical. It was cold that night with the fireworks. Well, it was cold both nights, but imagine it being cold and not being able to see the bridge yeah. when you're on a t- tour of the bridge. But it was still fun. We had a really good time. Really good time. And our the uh, tour guide, um, Bill Bowersox. Bill Bowersox. He did a wonderful job. He's a very, very well-informed, very experienced tour guide. I love the little headsets that they gave us. We could hear everything that he said, even in the wind. I just had a great time. There, I, I didn't even know about this, but there's like they closed the bridge after a certain time. I don't know if it's to stop people from jumping or just because it's dangerous with the wind or whatever. But it's like a pretty heavy-duty gate that closes, and you can't walk on the bridge after a certain time. And we got to go. We didn't get kicked off, basically. When the sun went down, we didn't get kicked off the bridge. We got to continue the tour to the first clay. What's it called? The first uh, tower? Tower works. I think it's tower. You got to go all the way to the tower? We could have been right under the tower. We never would have seen it. No, we didn't go. Oh. That, we didn't get to go that far. <laughs> oh, it was beautiful. It was so clear <laughs> and gorgeous. You could see everything. Sorry, Clay. That's okay. <laughs> and it, it really does sound like it was uh, handled better this time around. Back in the 50th anniversary, you know, they let pretty much everybody on the bridge, and there was a little weight issue there with the well, suspension bridge. Well, I guess it's bridge. built to go, Bill mentioned this, it's built to go eight feet down, and it went six or seven feet down with hundred th- over 100,000 people on it for the anniversary. Makes for a nice picture. And no, it made for a nice picture, but... Can you imagine being right in the middle, the very center? I would be freaked out. You have to stay exactly where you are. You don't have a choice. Right. So it's, it's, I mean, I would, oh my God. Did they know, though, the people that were on the bridge? Um, I or don't, was it just a gradual flattening? Until... I think it was a gradual thing. Well, what it was was the two mobs of people meeting in the middle. In the middle. And then the bridge went yeah. down, and then slowly they siphoned out. But, I mean, it probably took a couple hours before the person in the middle got to leave. And they, they said, a friend of mine that was on the bridge at the time, he said that he was okay, but there were people that had, like, you know, issues about being mm-hmm. in confined spaces. And there were a few people that actually ended up getting lifted over people's heads and carried out that way. You know, they were doing crowd, because they were freaking out crowd or surfing, you know, to get them out. Or And then a couple of people, they thought, well, let's get them to the edge of the bridge and then they'll have more air. And then they're standing on the edge of the bridge being pressed up against the guardrail going, oh, my God, I'm gonna, this is how I'm going to die. You know? so wow. He said that it was, sounds so much fun. That was just delightful. Fun oh, time had God. by all. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh. <laughs> we learned about, you know, the history and, and uh, they have like a little like a little mock-up of the bridge to show how it reacts to the wind, which was fascinating. Um, and I just thought it was awesome. The uh, security guy has this little car. Did you get to see the security guard, Clay? Yeah, that was cute. <laughs> it's like, I don't, it's the smallest thing you've ever seen. It's like, it's, you know, like a quarter the size of a Mini Cooper. And this one guy in this tiny little, little four-wheeled car... <laughs> <laughs> zooming around the bridge and it's like okay security guard I'm going to take you seriously well you know. <laughs> but it's completely enclosed because you know otherwise he'd freeze to death have you seen the Bay Bridge the, the Bay model in Sausalito the Bay Bridge model the, no so it's just the Bay model it's a I don't, it's actually a physical model of the whole San Francisco the entire, Bay with oh, the bridges no. and everything in it and they uh, will put like dye in the water to see what changes if they put in a new bridge or something? It's it's, oh, it's, really? it's totally it's fascinating because it's so analog. Where's and it at? It's so huge. It's in Sausalito and it's the Bay Bridge model. Oh, okay. not the Bay Bridge. I did it again. It's the, it's Bay, the Bay model. The Bay model. Okay. The, no, uh, I'd love to. I'd love to check that out. It's huge and pretty fascinating. But uh, it was it was great. It just worked out really well. And then um, the gentleman that was with me though was it the Roundhouse Clay? Is mm-hmm. it called the Roundhouse? We brought our own waters. I thought, oh, well, what if we want to drink? Take some walking, uh, even just to get up to the roundhouse. And he opened up the the soda can and just 
soda everywhere, all in front of the bears. We had to clean it up. It was pretty funny. <laughs> One of the things I was most impressed with is that the, those cables are actually supporting the weight of the bridge. Yes. But there are some minor cables, too. And there was one that came through where you could go and step on it, and you could feel the vibrations. And mm-hmm. that was pretty awesome. It was the stresses wow. that the Yeah, bridges... the car's going by. You, could, you said hold on to the, you know, the vertical cables, and you just feel the, the power coming through those. Okay, here's a question. Why do people like to commit suicide on the Golden Gate Bridge? Why do they like to jump off there? Bill, actually, I think he said that a few people have survived. Mm-hmm. There were a few folks yeah. that did, yes. Yeah. Yeah, there was a 17-year-old that did recently, jumped off on that, a dare. Oh, really? Not very long ago. Oh. Did you see the movie, The Bridge? Uh, the Bridge movie. I have not, but I've heard of this This movie. So depressing. Yeah, this so, guy filmed so these. The, uh, uh, somebody jumping off the bridge and then I guess he goes like back ex- to talk to relatives. Yeah, he did like an Andy Warhol thing where he kept the film, the camera on the bridge for 365 days. And then he would uh. find, you would see people. It, it's real manipulative in a way because you keep, it, you, the filmmaker has like you seeing interviews with the relatives and, oh. and talking about the person. And it keeps, it, it builds up until the climax, which is when you see them jump off the bridge. It's like the most disturbing movie in, in the world, kind of. But it's it's really depressing because it's just pretty much every family comes to the conclusion that there was nothing they could do to help this person and they were going to either throw themselves off the bridge or jump in front of a bus or, you know. Well, I think Bill something. said that they used to tell everybody or not broadcast, but just tell people or make it public how many people were have jumped. Right. But they don't do that anymore. They keep it close to themselves now, yeah. I guess. Or they don't release it to the media. Because it kind of sensationalizes it, I suppose. Yeah. Well, I guess, too, like, I'm kind of glad they don't, because if they did, then there could be people who would say, oh, we've got to close the walkway right, to protect the people that are going to do that. Which doesn't make sense, because you've got bridges everywhere. Are, if you, are you going to start locking them up? Well, but, like, a lot of bridges like that you can't walk over. Right. Like, there is no They're, walkway, right? Like, like, that is kind of unique, in a way, because, like, certainly the Verrazano really Bridge in New York, like, there's no... Nobody's no walking there. But yeah, the Brooklyn yeah, no. Bridge, you can walk over the Brooklyn Bridge. Except isn't that walkway over the middle? Yeah. And you're above, so you're above. trying to get over to the side, you'd fall into the roadway first, right? Right. Yeah. Still, that would be somewhat painful as it, well. It, it, it's, I guess it's not as dramatic <laughs> or as, you know... Not as glamorous? Is that uh, it? I don't know. Well, yeah. I, was, I was impressed. They said that you know there's been a lot of talk about putting up a fence to prevent suicides. They put up a little call box, and if someone's out there, they can call in. And they said the bridge control can have an officer to any point on the bridge with, in less than two minutes. Mm-hmm. And those little cars I said yeah. that I told you about. Zoom yeah. about. So, well, wow. yeah, a, a big thank you to the Golden Gate Bridge District for donating Absolutely. those tours to the movie bears and the movie bears getting them out to us. That Did was you get to awesome. go up in the tower? Was what I, I was oh, about no, they to- told us about the tower, though. They said that people don't go up in the tower. The elevator is way too small. And it just just wouldn't work. It was one of the compromises. The uh, bridge designer actually had planned to have a place where you could go up and mm-hmm. view, and they just they just didn't have the money for that. So, well, that was fun. But you could take a fake picture <laughs> as if you're standing at the top In the where house, the elevator yes. would have been. Yeah. Well, you yeah. see, they should have the dirigible that flies from the South Bay that you can take rides on. They should have it fly to the Golden Gate Bridge and more to the top of it. Wow. Yeah. So you see, that would be pretty rad. That would be rad. Oh, the humanity when that goes down. <laughs> <laughs> One of well, the greatest catastrophes. Catastrophe. <laughs> yeah. Well, speaking of humanity and interesting situations, a historical case was resolved recently in Australia. <laughs> <laughs> the infamous a dingo ate my baby situation. Um, the coroner finally ruled that, in fact, the baby was indeed eaten by a dingo. <laughs> Apparently so. I I was like whatever I'm on Facebook and it comes on and my one of my friends says it's true it's true more than one more than one person uh, posted it it's it's actually true the dingo did eat the baby because they didn't believe her she they went to jail right. she, she was she, actually yeah, she, she spent time in jail over this right <laughs> which is you know I, 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 my, one of my uh, Greg and I live with a housemate his name is Daniel and he's from Australia and when he tells us stuff <laughs> about Australia. I was like, oh my gosh, this sounds like incredibly deadly. It's all just like, oh, there's these spiders, and if they touch you, you die. <laughs> and you're at the beach, and then you, know, you get touched by this jellyfish, you die. And yeah. babies getting eaten by dingoes. And... 
<laughs> but she got vindicated. I guess it was it was true. A dingo did eat her baby because some other dingoes took some other children. So, uh, oh, ding. Oh, maybe she is telling the truth. Yeah, I mean, can you imagine being falsely accused of killing your own child? Oh, that'd be it does happen. To jail and, she oh. seemed very happy on CNN. So <laughs> really, they did it on CNN. I, I was at the gym. I and thought this all was an obscure it says, story. No, I, I thought I thought they were doing a joke because it says CNN. A dingo did eat her baby, and then you see this lady talking. And when I told uh, my housemate Daniel, he he actually said to me, "Are you sure you weren't watching The Onion?" <laughs> and I was like, no, no, it was CNN. The lady was there. He's like, no, she totally Wrong. killed her baby. You know? and I'm like, well. No, she didn't. Apparently not. So, see, I think every Australian believed that she killed the baby yeah. and didn't believe the dingo story. Well, she was demonized in the Australian press. And yes. The, the court of public opinion. Exactly. Next thing you're going to hear, OJ was innocent. Oh, wait a minute. He wasn't convicted. Oh. Ba-dum, ba-dum. I know people that have a gift for dialogue and they can or you know like if they're doing imitations they can repeat the words spot on and i tend to mix things up being left-handed oftentimes i'll replace left and right and up and down and get things all backwards and so i was trying to do the a dingo ate my baby imitation and i kept saying a baby ate my dingo <laughs> my friends are like actually that's even funnier because <laughs> you're special <laughs> a baby ate my dingo <laughs> Now, I've been to Australia, and emu and kangaroo are quite tasty. Didn't really care for the wallaby. It's kind of gamey. The, the they root... actually eat the meat of all those animals? Oh, yeah. Oh, my God. That's yeah. gross. Nom, nom, nom. Nom, 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 nom. Someone asked me if I was carnivorous or a vegetarian, and I said, I'm nomnivorous. Nom, 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 nom. Does anybody else have anything else to say about Australia? Dingoes eating babies, babies eating dingoes. Uh, men at work had some good songs. <laughs> they were awesome. There was a um, a group, Dingoes Eating Babies or something like that. There was actually a no. musical group, yeah. <laughs> I saw it online. It must be true. It must be true. It must be. Our next topic is about shopping. This past weekend, Vito and I borrowed Bill's car with our friend Kat, and we all went down to San Mateo County. Cause Road they trip. Have, they have stores down there that we don't have here in San Francisco, like JCPenney. in and out <laughs> A big target. Yes, in and out They have in and out in, in San Francisco. They do. There's one. But it's kind of hard to get to, and it's very touristy. And I was hungry, and there was an In and Out, so I went to In and Out. Where's the one in San Francisco? It's It's at the Wharf. Wharf. Fisherman's Wharf, Touristville Central. Yeah, that would explain why I have no idea where it is. Mm -hmm. It's the it's one of the few ones that does not have a drive-in. Yeah. Yeah, and as busy as all get out. Yeah, it is. Vito was all excited because we were, we had planned to go to Target, and we were going to go to um, Kmart because our friend Kat, she runs a backpacker hostel, and they're really rough on all the dishes and everything. So she was looking for some for some Corel bowls and plates and stuff that the backpackers couldn't destroy. And she knew that Kmart had it, but she wanted to check out Target. And I get... Scarlet's food from PetSmart. There are no PetSmarts in San Francisco. The Petco people have an evil, what do you call it, monopoly. And their prices, I mean, literally, it's worth driving to San Mateo County to buy dog food. That's crazy. So, um, Scarlet is a dog, then? Scarlet's a dog, yes. She's she's a woofy, woofy doggy doggy. She's not your grandmother? Scarlet or Brindle? Elderly family member that you're feeding uh, dog food. Which, which amendment is that I'm going to plead? The fifth. The fifth <laughs> amendment, yes, yes. No, Scarlet's a dog. So we like, oh, J.C. Penny. You know, they they support Ellen. You know, and they did the two mom Mother's Day ad, the two father, two dads Father's Day ad. So we went in there, and Vito got all excited because he was like, oh, they've got a they've got a big and tall section. They have big boy Woo. clothes at J.C. Penny. Except he found out that they don't have it in that location. They have them in the San Mateo location. San Bruno. Oh, San Bruno San location. Bruno. I always wanted to work for Big and Tall. Because <laughs> you get to, get to hang around with the big boys? Kind of. <laughs> You're a to, fan. What happened to Absolutely? You know, he's all kind of. Absolutely. Absolutely. Let me see if I... I can't move my voice that low. Absolutely. No, that doesn't work. <laughs> so, so do it, Tony. Do it, Tony. Absolutely. There you go. That's Perfect. It. Oh, there the it one. is. <laughs> so where do the big boys shop if you... Can't get to Sam Bruno to the J.C. Penny. You know, I, I've I've been relegated to KingSize.com, and I buy things from them and uh, and eBay. I type in like I a topic we're going to be talking about soon: uh, a pink pink shirts for Pride. And I know of a party, and I don't have anything pink, so I just went on eBay and typed in triple X, and I got a pink T-shirt coming my way. Woohoo! All right, mm-hmm. all right. 
eBay King Size Direct really is all I do. Well, going back to my XXL story, I don't know if you recognize this, but this is the shirt that I wanted. Oh, yeah, it J- is. At the JCPenney, and they didn't have the XXL anywhere on the peninsula, and they couldn't get it from me online. So I found it in the Hayward store. So yesterday after work, I got on BART the opposite direction and went all the way to Hayward and took a bus over. Look at you. You really my, wanted that shirt. Uh, wow. I got, I got my shirt. That's some dedication. To and they have the a shirt. Kohl's there, and you can get some bargains at Kohl's. And I figured, well, I was spending an obscene amount of money on BART and a bus to buy one shirt. So I stopped on Kohl's and got like four more shirts. So um, Wow, good for you. I yeah. Divide up the price. What about you? Uh, well, you know, there's always casual mail if you want oh, it's so ex- expensive. expensive clothes that fall apart pretty quickly. But you know, sometimes you gotta go there, right? And, mm-hmm. uh, Kmart actually has decent big and tall. Oh, stuff. they do. Okay, yeah, like t-shirts and things. Um, the longest road trip, uh, me and my buddy Tim took a road trip out to Stockton to go to Dillard's. <laughs> Dillard. and Dillard's actually has it's this kind of upscale. Nordstrom's kind of store, you know, but they have a really nice big and tall shop with like fancy big and tall clothes. Oh, wow. And if you go there on a sale, you can get some nice things. There you go. <laughs> so you get some bargains. There's no more sales at JCPenney. Do you know about that? Fair and square they pricing. Just, it's fair yeah, and square fair and pricing. Square pricing. They just, there's no more sales. Oh, delightful. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so when you go in, the price there is the price you're going to get. You can't wait for a sale anymore. But their prices yeah. are, are good. I mean, this is a Wiz Claiborne shirt. It was 22 bucks. Yeah, it's not bad. Yeah. Yeah. Fair and, and the, square. And the other thing I got there, I got another shirt, and it's like 15 or something. You know, So the prices were reasonable. Mm-hmm. I did uh, get a belt on King Size Direct that was too big. Problems you want to have, right? I've never actually but, bought from King Size. How, oh, how it's good. It, there's, uh, because I'm on some kind of mailing list now, now I got another, I got another uh, two other catalogs. One is for big men's clothes, and it is insanely expensive. Insanely expensive. And then I also go in for furniture for large people. So the, uh, the chairs and the everything is just extra wide, which is kind of neat, I guess. Actually, the best big men's clothing is in Rome, Italy. Okay. Uh, a, a couple of years ago, I was taking a music teaching class in Austria, and we went to Rome afterwards. And uh, You say that so nonchalantly. Well, it's, it's you know... <laughs> <laughs> I, I happened to be there or whatever. V- so, Vito, um, Vito and I went to Daly City. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, it, it's a place called Petron, and they have Petron Donna and Petron Uomo right next to each other for the men and women. But, like, okay. the, the big and tall clothing in Rome, like, you know how when you get, like, bigger pants, they make the zipper bigger, too? Like, like they make everything exponentially bigger when it shouldn't be. When your crotch isn't that big? Right. It's not like, it's like, okay, yes, I've, uh, I've got a big belly and a big ass. It doesn't mean that my crotch is five inches taller. You know, it's just kind of... <laughs> So, it's, it's, but, um, you know, if, if you're at a certain size, you I'm sure there were people, hopefully, who are listening the, the to this who have be, understood this. Uh-huh. But, the clothing must be designed by somebody as small as me, then. It, <laughs> Probably. Yeah. It, it, well, it's, it's like they took a pattern for you and just kept making it bigger rather than thinking some things are bigger, some things are not. But the, uh, <laughs> the, the clothes in Rome, like, they were amazing, and they actually were proportioned properly, and they fit uh-huh. right, and they made you look good rather than awkward. Wow. So, of course, it was crazy expensive. So, if you want to go Europeans, to Rome, that's the place. Europeans are small. I don't understand. Uh, there, you know, I saw some big Europeans there. I mean, there were some, uh, when I was in, in Austria, they were laughing at me when I said, oh, I wanted to buy some, you know, big clothing. So, it was much hotter than we had anticipated. And uh, they were like, ha, 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 clothes for you here? Ha, ha, ha. <laughs> and I'm like. In the Castro, big clothes? <laughs> you're right, yeah. It was kind of the same kind of deal. But, but you know, there were big people there interestingly enough one of a european department store h&m you know i was like oh we should i was gonna go shopping i said why don't we go to h&m and bill my partner said clay there's nothing for you there you know because their xl is a european xl and they don't have a double xl i want to wear david beckham underwear so where do it you looks think, really comfortable where do you, where think, do you want to where wear do you it? think h&m is from yeah exactly my left leg <laughs> <laughs> so where do you think h&m is from where do they originate well i think you already asked me this, so, so I already you, know. You can't answer. So, but I said you? England. What about you, John? Uh, Germany. And you, Mr. Uh, the Man? UK. Yeah, that's what I thought. They're from Sweden. Uh. Sweden. Yeah. So you got IKEA and H and M. And the um, I know this because I work part time at the HRC store, where you know big boys don't have a lot of options. No, unfortunately. Mm-hmm. And um, we had a jacket that was labeled 4XL, and people that were 3XL could barely fit in it, and were quite turked. 
the you know it said 4XL on it. This is an L4XL. It's for little little Asian Japanese guys or something. But our Swedish vid- visitors are thanking them for their IKEA, and they're like, well, "What do you think of our H and M?" I'm like, "Oh, I thought that was from the UK." Like, That's what everybody thinks. It's ours. <laughs> and he, they were saying that European sizes are actually getting smaller. So it's like they're on a campaign to shame the fat people. What, what did I say? That That's social social uh, engineering engineering. Wow, making their clothes smaller so people get smaller. Well, something I don't know. That's un-American. Oh well, it's well, it, it is un-American, actually. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, it is un-American. Ah, <laughs> uh, yeah, yeah. Any more? Not shop- eating French fries anymore. Any, any more shopping hints, Wolfie? You've been kind of silent on this. Uh, let's see. I usually go to Old Navy, or if I'm near a Target, I'll go there. You know, there is a supermarket below your apartment, Wolfie, that sells 3X t-shirts and I so completely long about underwear, that. which I've actually, <laughs> there was like, I was at a party at Wolfie's house and spilled something all over myself, and uh, I went to the grocery store and they had white and black t-shirts up oh, to 5X Wow! for like $10 or $5 with some really cheap price. So are all done. Yeah, I was like, hey, I'll wear this white t-shirt. <laughs> sure. I can't wear white. You know, not I, even I, for a few hours. I, I try to avoid it. It, get, it gets dirty pretty quick, but yeah. you know, you won't wear white, but you're going to wear pink. Why are you going to? Why are you buying a pink T-shirt, Vito? What's up? Well, well, for pride. I saw what you did there. That's, uh, that's uh, the that's good. apparently. I didn't know this. I've been going to prides for the last fifteen years. You wear pink on Pride Saturday. Saturday is that a San Francisco thing or? I believe I think so. so yeah. It is a oh, San okay. Francisco thing. Yeah, because yeah. I I didn't. No. They put a big disco ball over by uh, 16th and Market, mm. and they have DJs, and they close off the street, and people oh, really? walk around. I had no idea. Yeah, it's it's a party. I'm going to a pink party, and they said, you can't go unless you wear pink. So now you got your t-shirt. You got the t-shirt, and Clay, do you remember the name of the store we went to? The little Japanese store? <laughs> that everything's $1.50? The dollar fifty Japanese store. It was like Daishan or Dai Daisho, Dai something. And Daiso. It, Daiso. 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 It was awesome. Awesome. <laughs> it was awesome. awesome. <laughs> Vito. Vito walks in. He's like, oh, Clay. If I move, can we come back here? Yes, Vito. If you're good. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Okay. I'm a good boy. He's driving me and to the then store he was again. Gone. He just disappeared, and it was like, and you got some kind of snacky treat. That we didn't know what I, it was, and it was. So I good. just made sure that there was no sea seaweed in it or seafood, and I bought two different kinds of snacks, and they were so good. We all ate. Well, I ate most of it, all of them. They were like giant discs of of tastiness. Yeah, <laughs> tasty discs. Tasty. Tasty discs. Well, I used to remember Pink Saturday because it was always the Saturday where my softball team distru- decided to dress up in pink wigs and go around the Castro uh, bar to bar. Sometimes they'd wear little outfits as well. But not you, though. No, but uh, I would meet up with them the next day and I'd see a lot of great pictures. <laughs> and I've held on to a few. Yeah. Oh, awesome. <laughs> For blackmail purposes. Oh, of course. <laughs> So this Pink Saturday, I'll be working from 4 to closing at the um, HRC store. So if you want to come by and show off your pink T-shirt. I would love to. It's actually got a funny saying on it. Does HRC have pink T-shirts? I was about to ask. You know, we did last year. I don't know if we have any this year. You know, maybe you could push for pink T-shirts for fatties. Chubbies. Considering a significant portion of the staff is bears, you would think that... Uh, well, they would... did have that one really cute bear shirt last year, because like, that's how I renew my membership. I'll go to the store and buy a t-shirt every year. and uh, That does it. Yeah. They had the cute bears tickling each other t-shirt yeah, the last bear hug. year. Yeah, so do they have another equivalent kind of thing? The one they have now is, um, it's got the um, little uh, squares of color across the chest, like mm-hmm. the rainbow shirts, and then on the left butt cheek, there's a bear paw print. So it's like you're getting your you're getting your left bear left butt cheek mauled by a bear. Okay, and it's a black uh, T-shirt. But then the sizes are small, right? No, no, they're that one's actually a beefy tee, so it's it's generously sized. One thing a lot of people don't know about is that Pink Saturday is also the night of the Dyke March, which is a lot of fun, and that starts down in the um, as you get closer to the mission south of east of Dolores Park mm-hmm. and then swings on up through the Castro. They usually come up 16th. 16th Street, yeah. So I don't really look good in pink. I look kind of washed out, but, you know. Well, maybe if you tried, like, a black pair of Speedos and then some pink body paint. That would totally over. work, That's Clay. interesting right I would, there. I want to see that. I think that would be hot. 
I would love to see that. Lots of pink body paint. Black okay. Speedos and lots of pink, pink body paint. You'd mm. be the only one. It'd be unique. You know, it'd be just my luck. I wouldn't. There'd be like seven others a week. Son of a... <laughs> <laughs> mean, like Son a of a Halloween bitch. party? <laughs> Hi, these are my balls and my pink <laughs> shirt. Oh my god, you guys! <laughs> and my belly. <laughs> and to tie it in a knot above your belly, right? <laughs> and on a personal note, this pride will be the second anniversary of Bill and I meeting in person. Actually, Pink Saturday is the second wow. anniversary of us meeting in person. We met online. Cool. And then we had our first date on Pink Saturday two oh. years ago. Was he wearing pink? No, he wasn't. Wow. I think I remember you telling me you were going to go meet him. Yeah. So what does he look like? Devastatingly he, handsome. Of Dev course. Gorgeous. <laughs> he's gorgeous, gorgeous, I tell you. Oh, he's gorgeous. <laughs> <laughs> little Britain. Yes. Uh, Vito and I share an affection for Little Britain. Um, Bill is um, a little bit shorter of me. Goatee, dark hair. He's Italian, of Italian descent. And he's um, handsome. Oh, man. my God. Can he cook? He's a good cooker. Clay's a good cook. Bill is a and you know what's hysterical is that you said cook. earlier, John, that you know you're, everyone that knows you knows that you don't cook. When I moved in with Bill, neither one of us really did a lot of cooking, but we thought, ah, we're living together now. You know, we'll cook for two; it's easier. And we both just jumped in with both feet and have had some pretty good success. And you know, we're, oh, amazing. We're doing Every time well. I've gone there, just amazing food. And I've been posting my progress on Facebook, and finally, a friend of mine put, you know, Clay, I didn't think you knew what a oven was for. <laughs> What happened? Yeah, I, I got really lucky when I moved in with uh, when Greg and I moved in together. He uh, forbade me from cooking because like one day he asked me to make tater tots in his deep fryer. He's from Virginia, so of course he has a deep fryer. So I didn't know that you were supposed to heat it up first or whatever. So oh, I, I basically man. turned a bag of tater tots into one giant tater tot. <laughs> and at that point, he was like, "Okay, I'm doing the cooking, and you can clean." That's you know. great. He also cool. didn't let me bring any of my kitchen stuff over here. Um, um, because it all sucked, the which, burnt, the which burn led marks. to, well, you know, there's just a lot of cheap stuff, and then which led to my mom uh, discovering a dildo in the Mr. Coffee, because one of my friends, uh, <laughs> so I lived in New Jersey, I'm from New Jersey, and, you know, I decided, I fell in love with Greg, had a job out here, was going to move out, so the last, my lease was up, so I moved back in with my mom and dad, and Greg was like, I've got coffee makers and stuff i don't need any of your crap it's really bad so a bunch of my friends came over to help me pack up my stuff and there was this guy frank who's a really good buddy of mine hi frank if you're listening to this and he um decided to put this dildo that i had into the mr coffee and didn't say anything so everything got boxed up and brought back to my parents garage oh, and he did it on purpose uh i think he just saw it there so oh, he, okay. did, he wanted to put it someplace uh, I, I i don't know what was going through his head because usually the mr coffee is not the place where you would put sex toys <laughs> but um it was clean you know it was in the dishwasher so he um <laughs> uh so basically it was like spring break for me i fly out here to spend time with greg and you know we're talking about moving in together my parents knew i was moving in with him obviously and and uh, so my mom has a garage sale, and she's like, "Is it okay if I just sell your stuff?" And I'm like, "Right on, you know, I don't care, <laughs> sell it." So this was like the first weekend I'm away. She doesn't say anything. I talk to her like two or three times. Like, I'm at the Golden Gate Bridge. It's so much fun, woo! You know, and she's like, "Oh, delightful, yeah, very nice." Yeah. And then she picks me up at the airport, and she's like, doesn't say anything. I'm in the car. She uh, basically is like, "Okay, well, you know, we're back home. You run upstairs and freshen up, and you know, Dad's getting Chinese food." You know, at, at the awesome. place. So when I run upstairs to you know my old high school bedroom, which of course now that I'm moved back in, like it's like I'm 17 again. So my mom is cleaning the bedroom and doing my laundry. Doing and your stuff. laundry, awesome. I, I I open up the door and of course the bed is made and everything's tidied up. I wasn't you know my mom was like the original Martha Stewart, so I wasn't surprised at that. But what did kind of blow me away on top of the pillow, like a, like a chocolate mint at a hotel, <laughs> was this dildo. Oh. And I'm just like, ah, 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 ah. And, and then I just here okay dad's home with food so i go back downstairs and the two of them are just sitting at the table like well we had this garage sale john and i pulled out the <laughs> Mr. Coffee, and i'm like oh okay <laughs> that's great nice well we're, we're running out of time but i will share my inappropriate dildo story i was having a party and oh it's just i don't remember this topic being on the list it is now thank you john okay well and, let um, me think of one while you're while you're doing that <laughs> So, I don't have one, so it's all you guys. I, I do have another one as well. But. So about an hour or two in the party, you know, things are slowing down a little bit, and all of a sudden, my friend Spencer comes barging in the room, and he has the bowl of popcorn. He's like, "Clay, nobody's eating the popcorn." And I look down in the popcorn, and there's the dildo. 
flop down in the middle of the popcorn. I'm like, Spencer. <laughs> <laughs> well, he f- went into my nightstand, pulled out the dildo, oh, and it was the po- popcorn, he, and okay. was offering it to guests. He's like, I've been offering the popcorn to everyone. Popcorn. And there's a big dildo sitting in there. I guess it's a visual joke. You have to be there. Okay, Whatever. so it's time for back scratches. Yay! I'd like to offer an eye scratch. I'm going to scratch Fido's eyes out for glaring at her right now. <laughs> <laughs> Is that on your agenda, good. Vito? I don't get it. <sighs> just debit, credit, or... or what is it? Uh, are oh, you, are debit, you, credit, or just get it. Are you doing Lumpy Space Princess right now? No, that's... Um, <laughs> that's uh, remember the shoes. Shoes. Oh, my God, Oh, shoes. where do I get that? Uh, I like your top. Where'd you, oh, Kelly? Where'd you get Kelly? that top? Kelly, I'm doing Kelly. Kelly. Where'd you get that top? Well, well, Kelly and Lumpy Space Princess are pretty close. Let me borrow oh, okay. that top. Yeah, You're not even wearing it. Let me borrow it. that top. Such oh, a best oh, friends forever. Let me borrow that top, so. batch. So, back scratches for Kelly. Okay. <laughs> all righty. Um, you've been talking all evening, but if you, you know, did you want to talk some more? Get some back scratches? Uh, I do want to give out a couple of back scratches to... Um, Mary and Joe over at Moby Dick, they've been helping us out with a, f- a fundraiser we're putting together on Saturday. So huge back scratches for one of each. For the Seaman? For the Moby Dick Seaman, my softball team. So they're, they're donating stuff. They're helping us out. So. Yay, Seaman. What is their name again? The Moby Dick Seaman. Ooh, nice. Yes. We made fun of it last episode. It's, it's, it's kind of hard not to, but it's awesome. It's, re- it's, re- it's re- I always say it's refreshing. So it's refreshing. <laughs> yes, that's nasty. Vito, do you have any back scratches? I do have some back scratches. I got my hair cut again from the guys from Daddy's, but this time Arlen did it. So I told Arlen, and I sent them a link to the podcast. Yay. So I'm going to back scratch Arlen from Daddy's Barbershop this time around for taking me as a walk-in. I also want to back scratch the guys from the SF Movie Bears uh, for putting, putting together the humongous 300-plus Bears Prometheus uh, movie. Dave Hayes and company. Yeah, yeah. It was just incredible. Lots of fun, lots of fun. And then um, during, or while I was waiting in line, I met this really great couple called Jeff and Chris. I basically said that I won't backscratch them unless they become listeners. I blackmailed them that they had to listen to the podcast and I'd backscratch them. Yo, Vito, getting tough, man. (laughs) So, Jeff and Chris, thank you for listening. (laughs) And if you know what's good for you, Jeff and Chris, you'll continue to listen. Scratch, Vito scratch, the scratch, enforcer. Scratch, scratch. <laughs> Getting tough, Vito. Yep. How about Wolfie? Any back scratches from Wolfie? I'd like to give a big uh, back scratch to my friend James, who's uh, recovering from a bit of a spill. And Ouch. that's about all I've got. Hang in there, James. And then last but not least, our guests. Uh, well, uh, you know, I've got a back scratch to my husband, Greg. Uh, he does all sorts of crazy stuff for me, and he <laughs> deals with me all the time. And he signs um, you up for creating theme songs for you know podcasts. he does but i'm glad he did so Yay. it's good Yay. actually um, yeah, i've got another back scratch and i have to back scratch the bobbleheads for dealing with me and the wonellies uh too because you know they have to put up with me and everybody else i know so back scratches <laughs> for all and <laughs> thanks this, for putting up everybody with john is yeah. this required listening for your kids or the the extra credit for well you know school is out for the summer <laughs> so I, I don't think they're going to be checking this out until uh next year maybe or who knows so well we have the explicit tag it's all online (laughs) i have one more back scratch that i just thought of i'd like to give a big back scratch to Vito for successfully getting a california state uh motorcycles license excellent i passed the test third time's the charm so you're gonna get a motorcycle uh a scooter or motorcycle apparently i should be getting a harley because of my beard and my looks (laughs) <laughs> well, I do have to say, you know, I, we always made fun of that. Greg drives a Harley, and he tried a bunch of different motorcycles, but he fit on the Harley well. You know, mm. just physically, it was better, more comfortable than a Triumph uh. or some of the other bikes he tried. So you might want to. Well, that's what I was thinking. I was thinking that I would uh, rent, as long as it's not too pricey, rent some different motorcycles and try them out. Mm-hmm. And to see what I like, because there's there's uh, quite a few rental places here. You got to see what fits right. It's like a good dildo, right? Yes. <laughs> Which does not belong in your bowl of popcorn or your Mr. Coffee. No. Correct. Correct. Yes. <laughs> and with that lesson in life, we're going to see you next Tuesday. See you next Tuesday. Thank you for having me. Thank You're you. You're welcome. Thank you for being Woo. here. Woo.
Good night, everybody. Good, good night, night, everybody. Good night. Or good day. Good afternoon. Fade to the... You're not going to do it, Clay? Peppy little Fade theme music written by our guests. You're not going to do it. Good night, mate. Dun, dun. Classes. Good night, mate. There you go. Visit us at bearelement.com. Oh.